There's a problem. Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures, and if you've been following along the channel for a while, at least following the build of my Gladiator, you may remember a little over a year ago, I made a whole video on re-gearing the Gladiator, do you need to, why you should, that sort of thing. And so you may be wondering, what the heck is going on in here if I just re-geared this a year ago? That's a very good question. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Shop Overland Apparel, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for overland adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade portable awning. So here's what's been going on. After my second trip to Colorado um, for Overland Expo Mountain West, uh, somewhere either before or after, I can't remember the exact time frame, I started hearing a just a, a, a hum, a, a a growling hum, I guess you could say, coming from the rear. Didn't think much of it, you know, got home from that trip, pulled the diff, uh, pulled the diff cover, checked out the gears, everything looked fine. Uh, so yeah, didn't think a whole lot of it. After two trips, two long trips, one to Michigan, one to Virginia, uh, pulling our Conqueror trailer, the, uh, the, the, the humming noise got progressively worse. So talked to some friends that knew about gearing and describing the sound to them and they immediately said, yeah, I bet your gear's overheated. Uh, I bet your gear's got too hot. Could possibly be your pinion bearings, but I bet your gears, with all the traveling that you've been doing and the, and the towing, I bet your gears have just overheated. So me and a buddy of mine, David, um, who helped me with the previous gear installs in, in, in my first Jeep, uh, he and I got into the rear diff, tore it down, and he's got the expertise to be able to look and see, yes, there was actually a problem. There's some uneven wear on the ring gear. And after looking deeper, he found uh, definitely some issues with the, with the pinion. Um, and that necessitated replacing the gears in the rear. Unfortunately, um, went with 529 gears a year ago. What I didn't know then is that only one company, Nitro, makes 529 gears for the JLs and JTs. And upon calling them, there's no way they could get me gears um, you know, any time in the near future uh, for 529s. Which meant that I was either gonna be out of commission or I was gonna have to bite the bullet and re-gear both front and rear differentials. And considering the traveling that I do, Decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and do a full re-gear after only having been re-geared a year ago. Very unfortunate um, that it came to that. I, I had originally wanted 513 gears anyway, but a year ago, COVID supply chain crap, um, 513s weren't available at that time. They were back ordered, so went with 529s that were available, not knowing then what I know now that only one company makes them. And, if you have an issue, you only got to deal with, you know, there's only one company that can help you out. So upon tearing out the, the rear end, this is what we found. Um, this, is, uh, this is a normal pinion gear. As you can see, the teeth are nice and smooth. Uh, that's what a pinion gear is supposed to look like. This one came out of the front. This is the one from the rear. Check that out. Uh, let me see if I can get the camera to focus. Come on, focus. Check that out. Um, that is a very mangled, you can see a chunk out of that. All the pitting, uh, little bits that have 
that have fallen off. Um, that's, that's, that's my opinion from the rear. And what, what happened is, yeah, the, the gears got too hot and heat destroys. So what I have since learned is that the factory diff cover does not allow enough fluid to be held in the differential when you're running deeper gears like 513s, 529s, running larger tires like 37s and 38s that I have now. And so it just, there's just not enough fluid in there to keep the gears cooled with the amount of travel that I have been doing. Um, and that has caused the failure of the pinion gear, which has been making the horrible noise. So um, we tore it down, did a complete re-gear. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't fault the shop that installed the gears a year ago. Um, I think they installed them well. Uh, so, so I don't, I, I don't, I don't, see any signs of installation error. However, um, upon calling them with this issue, they did tell me, oh yeah, we recommend that, uh, you know, everyone who gets new gears like, like you did, running larger tires like you did, that they get an aftermarket diff cover that allows for more fluid, to, it holds more fluid in the diff and also has, has cooling fins on the back to keep it, it cool. And that I do have an issue with because that was not recommended to me. Um, so, um, uh, that's that's my issue. Um, the install went great, but I was not given that knowledge. Uh, that knowledge was not shared with me that an aftermarket diff cover would be beneficial in keeping your oil cool and to hold more of it to keep your gears cool. Um, so that has led to, to where we are today, one year later. So to remedy this, I have purchased, uh, this was not given to me, this was not a sponsored deal at all. Uh, I have purchased and spent what I think is a ridiculous amount of money on this new diff cover from AFE Power. Um, it is a deeper diff cover. It allows you to hold, I think, two full quarts of diff fluid, whereas the factory barely holds a quart and a half. Um, it has a top fill hole here with um, a kind of a dipstick with a long magnet in there to catch any debris that may be floating around in there. It has a drain hole also with a magnet on it to catch any debris. And uh, a handy dandy little little window here so that you can just easily, you know, get onto the side of your diff and see the fluid level. So that's pretty cool. But it is, uh, it is aluminum, I believe. It's way too light to be steel. I think it's aluminum. And it has cooling vents here and um, structural uh, gussets here. And this, uh, this, diff cover came highly recommended. Um, so that's what we're going with. So to remedy my issue and uh, prevent this problem from happening in the future, we're gonna swap out the diff cover. Unfortunately, this did not come in, you know, as we were doing the gear. So I did, my Jeep was ready two days ago and I've already got to drain that fluid and put this new cover in and put new fluid in. Um, and I am using 75140 synthetic diff fluid, which also handles the heat better. I was using that before, but it didn't make, um, it, it didn't make a big difference apparently, <laughs> but still gonna be using 75140 diff fluid uh, in this one. So let's get this going and get this fixed. Then you got the diff cover super easy. Anybody can do this. You just drain the fluid, which the factory fill hole is right here. Next, just break all of these, I think 12 bolts loose with a 10 millimeter socket. And leave the top one just in there a little bit so you can pull this off and let all the oil drain out a little faster without making a horrible mess and finish it off. There. The brand new gears. Now you are going to reuse the factory seal here, which I love the fact that these now come with gasket seals and you don't have to deal with RTV anymore. That is fantastic. Comparing these side by side, you can see just how much deeper 
the AFE diff cover is compared to the factory and how much extra space there is for more fluid. Um, this you know, dimples in here, this is very much a deep reservoir there. Um, uh, quite a bit different in, in design and how much fluid they can hold. Right, after getting your gasket in place, make sure it's clean. There's no little pieces of debris inside the rubber seal, because otherwise you'll have a, a leaky diff, which you don't want. And then I like to start at the top and work my way around, putting it in there loosely. AFE does supply different bolts that I'm going to use. I'm a little, I'm not a huge fan of these bolts just because it does require you to have, uh, these are, have an Allen key head instead of a typical 10 millimeter. So uh, I'm almost tempted to reuse the factory bolts, but since these came with it, that's what I'm going to go with. This little notch right here is where you, and since it has a top fill, you put the oil in from the top, and once it starts draining out here, that's when you know if it's full or not. So, time to get some fluid in here. I do very much like this top fill. That is super handy. There it comes. All right, done. Doki, um, that's in, that's tight. And drop this in. That's done. Now, the, the AFE, this deeper diff cover, does require you to put shims on the rear sway bar. So I don't have my rear sway bar connected right now because uh, you got to put some shims in there that they do provide. Be right back. All right, they do include the shims, which are these little guys right here. They just mount right up to the factory locations, and then the sway bar mounts up to this. And they do include the new hardware to mount uh, this to that. So it should be pretty easy. And then for the sway bar, you just reuse the factory bolts. With the sway bar shims in place and the sway bar reconnected, there's now plenty of room for the sway bar with the new larger diff cover. And I, I think it looks great. My only concern with it is it does have a little bit of a lip right here. You see that right there? It has a little bit of a lip right there. And I'm concerned about dragging this over a rock and catching that lip and damaging the diff cover. So, I, I may look into the Asphere uh, rear differential skid plate. Um, I think that might be a good addition. Because of that lip, I don't want to drag it over a rock and lose all my diff fluid. That'd be a very bad day. Um, but, uh, I mean, this should take care of my issues. This is what it should sound like. Be sure and subscribe, follow along in the upcoming adventures, and we'll see how well this is doing. Hopefully, between now and the next year, I won't uh, overheat the diff and deal with that whining noise and having to do this another time, because that would suck, like real bad. So if you are considering re-gearing your, your Wrangler, your JL, or your JT Gladiator to you know, much deeper gears, 513s, 529s, gonna run larger tires, 37s, 38s, 40s, um, then, then get an aftermarket diff cover that allows you to, um, to, to hold more fluid in there for cooling purposes because it, apparently it is a, a common issue uh, with the JLs and the JTs that, that uh, the larger gears, the larger tires cause the rear end to overheat and that causes bad things to happen, ask me how I know. But uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you would like, subscribe, check out our Patreon, 
uh, if you want to consider supporting us, gain access to special content, special events, uh, all of our GPS data, that sort of thing. And for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. I'm going to go inside, get cleaned up, and, and I'm done. Yay.